name is Misoya Olabegi, and you're listening to Iron Mike. Sharpening Sessions. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of A Sharpening Session with Iron Wifey. This week, I have Adebisoye Olabegi. Olabegi? Yeah, <laughs> help me with that one. <laughs> I didn't even say all of Biggie. You got it. Okay, awesome. So she is a amazing writer, and she is actually one of the writers for Iron Wifey. So she tunes in pretty much almost every month. But she's an amazing writer. She has an amazing blog, and I want you guys to share with me and getting to know Ada Basoye. And so Basoye, tell me about yourself. Well, I was born in Nigeria, and I moved to Canada when I was five years old, and grew up there for the most part. Um, I grew up in church. Both my parents are pastors, and there was always something in me longing for a deeper relationship with God, but um, I kind of drifted in and out of that, and um, and all through college, I still had that longing for a deeper relationship, and there were times where I was in a really deep relationship with God, and other times where I just wasn't, and then um, I went through college. I graduated, and then at 22, God just grabbed my heart. And over the past <laughs> two years, there's just been no back and forth, and it's just been, I've been completely on fire for God, and I'm so grateful for that experience. So yeah, yeah I've been living in the states for seven years after I moved. Um, I moved to the states after Canada to start college, and I've been in the states since. And I currently live in Atlanta, Georgia. That is awesome, and I love how you said there was a point where you were super on fire for God and there was a point where you weren't on fire for God. And it's so crazy because a lot of us as Christians, we go through that to where sometimes we're, we're all the way in and sometimes we're not. Can you tell us a little bit about that season and how the transition was going back and forth? Yeah. So what I realized is with that transition, my relationship with God was always dependent on other people. Ooh. So sometimes I was on fire and at a point in college, I would say I was on fire because of a Bible study I was going to. Mm-hmm. And that was a really great, um, a really great time because I would go every Monday to this Bible study, but I really wasn't having a relationship with God for myself. So that was during, I think, the second semester of my sophomore year. And then the summer happened and I didn't have that Bible study anymore. So mm-hmm. it was just like, I didn't have that relationship anymore. But then in February, the last Sunday of January 2016, I remember I was in church and there was an altar call and it was, when was the last time someone accused you of being a Christian? And I was just so convicted in that moment. And since then, I've grown in my own personal relationship with God. And it's just something that I can't really explain. So it's, but it's the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. And I'm really grateful. That is awesome. And I am so, so, so excited that it actually happened to you so young because you're just such an amazing person. And for those who of you out there who are listening, uh, me and Vasilia went to school together. So we actually met in school. <laughs> um, but it's just amazing to see how far the Lord has brought you. And I am truly excited for where he's going to take you next. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. No, it is my pleasure. So you started a blog and you named it after yourself. Tell me about that. Yes. So I've actually kind of already told you a little bit about this. Um, I told you that I was in and out of relationship with God. So my name means the crown has returned to the throne. Mm. And um, so during that time when God brought me closer to him, I actually moved back to Canada for four months. And that's kind of a long story, but um I was kind of in an isolation period and I was just alone with God for a period of time. And um, I was listening to something at that, that point and I was watching something about a girl looking up the definition of her name and how she started going by her middle name because she felt that was more who she was in Christ. And I was like, oh, my name means the crown is returned to the throne. And I was just thinking about it in that moment. And it was like, the Holy Spirit just downloaded in me that I returned to the throne of God. And it's like, I'm here to stay. So I decided to name it Ade Visoye because it was really depicting my journey. And um, the way I write on my blog, it's always something that I've gone through, I'm going through. So I write it to share so that people can see my walk with God. So it's really about showing God through my life. That's why I named it after myself. (laughs) Yes. Gosh, the throne has returned. 
the crown has returned. The crown has returned to the throne. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Can I name my daughter after you? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is amazing. So how do you think so far your blog has helped you in your walk of faith and your walk with Christ? Yeah, so I would say one of the ways it's helped me is just accountability. Um, mm-hmm. So one of the things that I felt God tell me as soon as like that moment when he grabbed me was that I'm going to be a leader in the body of Christ. And um, right now my blog isn't as well known, but I know that there's coming a time where Like he's called me to preach. And um, even as I write my blog and as I share it with people, like out in my life and as I'm doing things, I know that I have to be accountable to the people that I'm sharing my walk with. Mm -hmm. So it helps me to be accountable, but it also helps me to think through things. Um, Like I said, it's whatever I write about, it's always something that I'm dealing with or I've dealt with. So it helps me to think through what I'm going through and just to Um, be able to see what I'm going through clearly. So it's really helpful. And just last night I was writing um, and it's just, it's just so, it just puts things in perspective. So I really, I really, really enjoy it. It's um, therapeutic as well. That is awesome. So seeing that you said last night you were writing, what typically motivates you to write? I know a lot of people will schedule blog posts. Like what does your writing schedule look like? So my writing schedule, I at least, try to post every other week. I haven't been that great with it lately. So usually I'll try and sit down and sometimes I'll have a topic in mind of what a, what I want to write about. And other times I'll just start writing and just go with it. And I'll just feel the Holy Spirit kind of leading me in the direction of what to write. And I'll get to the middle of a post and it'll just be something completely different than what I started with. <laughs> Don't you just love when that happens? I love it. It's really awesome. And it's just, and I can just go on and on. And it's just, it's such a great time. Like I mm-hmm. used to hate writing growing up and all through college, I hated writing, but it was growing in my relationship with God um, that I've learned to enjoy writing. And it's, it's really awesome. Oh my gosh. That is so awesome. I, I literally just love when that happens. I'd be like, Oh, today I'm going to write about contentment. And then it turns into this whole issue about joy and where your joy comes from like it's right. like wow I was like, okay lord uh where'd I was you- like that was not my topic but okay <laughs> come through lord exactly come on hashtag come through lord <laughs> so you write for the magazine and i remember reaching out uh putting on putting up a facebook post or instagram post and i was like hey you know if there are any writers who are faith-based you know let me know and I'd love for you to write for the magazine. And people responded. And you were one of those people. And I'm not going to lie, it blew my mind away because I was just trying to be obedient to the Lord. But what led you to want to write for Iron White Beat? Yeah, so I saw what you were doing. And I was like, this is a really awesome thing to do to put together a magazine. And like I said, I never really saw myself as a writer. But I just felt like Um, I had started my blog at the point that I saw that post and I was like, oh my gosh, this would be a good opportunity to get uh, my writing out more. And I just felt um, convicted to go ahead and reach out to you and ask to be a writer. And I'm glad that you accepted me. (laughs) Well, I, like I said, I was blown away by the fact that you even responded. So at that point, I was just like, oh my gosh, Lord, people are responding. This is actually (laughs) something. (laughs) So I was super excited. And I want to say the first issue that you wrote in was probably the power of prayer. I want to say if I'm dating back, I think it was the power of prayer, which was the first one that I had you in because I want to say the very first piece that you entered was this prayer is for him. And let me tell you, Basoye, oh my goodness. People who read that magazine and who go back and read that magazine, that is their favorite story. And they always tell me, they're like, the woman who wrote this prayer is for him literally spoke my heart. Can you tell me about, first off, writing that piece and how you were feeling as you wrote that piece? Yeah. Um, So yeah, I remember your... um you were telling us what you wanted to do for that piece was for us to write a prayer for someone. And at that point, 
um, I just finished talking to a guy and we were talking for a few weeks. And um, so I was what, 23? And, but we had dated for a point when we were teenagers and we really liked each other. And at some point last year, um, no, I was 24. <laughs> um, but at some point last year, he reached out to me and told me that he still really liked me and that he wanted to be with me. And um, I honestly kind of felt the same way. So we had started talking again. But at the same time, I knew it wasn't what God wanted because he wasn't saved. I'm like, this can never work. Like, this can't go far. And they kind of hurt, but I had to end it. And um, so even though I had to end that relationship, there was just kind of a grace that came over me where it was easy to let go of that relationship because I never loved anyone like the way I really, I loved him, but I just knew it wasn't what God wanted and it was painful to let it go, but God just gave me the grace to let it go. And um, there's a line in there that I write that I want him to be saved, but not be, so that I can be with him so that um, just so that he can be saved, that God's love has already overwhelmed the loss of his love. And that's actually so true. Like it was just, it was just a grace that came over me that allowed me to let go and not really go through too much heartbreak with it. It was just in being obedient, God came in and just brought his love that really did overwhelm the loss of his love. So, um, but it was painful to do it at first, but that's just the beautiful thing about being obedient to God. When you're obedient, when he comes in, it, you don't always have to, everything doesn't have to feel perfect to be obedient. So, yeah. And that's just really my honest heart for him. I want him to be saved, not so that we can be together, but truly so that he can know Christ for himself. Oh my gosh. Like that is literally the most powerful and mature answer that a Christian woman can have because a lot of us are chasing these men or have in our past chased these women or some of us are currently <laughs> a man who we know is not after God's heart and who we know is not for us and so the fact that you wrote this prayer for him and literally like I you know what we're gonna pause and we're gonna insert this prayer that she wrote right here so you guys can listen to it and then we're going to come back and I just want you to just sit there and just think on yourself <laughs> because literally if you are going through a situation where you are in a relationship or with a man who you know is not after God's heart you need to listen and you need to pray this prayer so we'll be right back this prayer is for him the one I wanted to marry. I thought it was going to be him, but he doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. And I know I need you at the center of it all. He doesn't want to sing your praises. And he doesn't know that your son is the only way to be saved. Heavenly Father, this prayer is for him. I pray that one day he gets to know you. I pray he gets to know you well. I pray that one day he longs to sing your praises. I pray that you knock on the door of his heart and I pray he receives your son as Lord and Savior. I pray he becomes filled with your overwhelming joy, and I pray he discovers that your joy is his strength. That void he told me he's looking to the world to fill, I pray that one day it will be filled by you. Heavenly Father, this prayer is for him. This prayer is for his soul. I pray that one day you make him whole. I pray that one day he gets to know you. I don't know when that one day will be, but I pray that one day will come. Not so that we can be together. Your love has already overwhelmed the pain of the loss of his love. I want him to experience you for himself. I want everyone to receive your son and experience your presence. I experience your joy. Your joy is too good for it to ex be experienced by a few. Your love is too great for the whole world not to know. I don't know if he will ever accept you. I don't know if his one day will come. But Lord, I thank you. I thank you for our relationship and for renewing my desire to help as many people as possible experience the joy of you. I pray their one day will come. I pray that it will come quickly. I pray that they make their hearts your home. Heavenly Father, this prayer is for him and every lost soul. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. So when I tell you literally, like all of the response that I got from that issue, people loved that prayer. Yeah. Loved and everybody could relate. Yeah, I think so. It's the, yeah, it's definitely something that a lot of us, a lot of us go through. Yeah. 
Oh my goodness. Okay. So I'm sorry. <laughs> we <laughs> got a little distracted there. I want to know how the Lord brought you through that situation. Yeah. So like I said, it was like when he reached back out to me, I don't know, at the same time I had been thinking about him. I think he reached out to me sometime in like March. And for some reason in January, I just couldn't stop thinking about him. So I was actually thinking about him for a while when he ended up reaching out to me. And um, we just started talking again. And I think we were talking for about two months and it was just really deep for me. I'm like, oh my goodness, I wish he was saved. Like he's, I would definitely marry him if he was saved. And um, so we just had that time of talking, but I knew, I just, one day I sat down and I thought about it and I was like, even if he gets saved, like, is he really the one God wants for me to be with? Like, can he lead me? Can he be the man that um, God's spoken to me about in terms of like my husband? And I was just like, the Holy Spirit's like, no, like, that's not the person I've, I've called you to be with. And it's not our job to change the person. Like, so I shouldn't even be dating him, hoping he's going to get saved. Like he needs to get saved and I need to be on my own and like, let him come to me saved. So I'm like, okay, God, I'm going to give this situation to you. And if I'm going to let it go. And if he gets saved, that's awesome. And if, if he doesn't, like, that's, but it's not my job to come here and change him. So I just had to be obedient. I had to let it go. And he was very understanding about it because he knows where I am with my faith. And um, it was painful to let it go. But like I said, in obedience, like God comes in and it's like, he, I didn't have, my heart wasn't healed before the obedience. My heart was healed after the obedience, which is just another thing that I'm learning with God is that like, he wants obedience first and then then um he'll bring the peace you know mm -hmm. so that was so it was tough at first but like I said there was just so much grace that came with letting it go and it was it wasn't something that took long to heal from it was just it was easy <laughs> God really just brought that grace and um like within a few days I was okay and I was like oh like I can I can do this <laughs> so yeah Yes. And it's so crazy how you said it's not our job to change these people. It's not, it's not our right. job to change him. And you had to ask yourself the hard questions. Like, can he lead me? Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Lord. When I tell you like, Oh my goodness. The, the Holy spirit was just, I, it, for those who don't know, I've been sitting over here just cheesing as she's just talking because it's like the Holy Spirit is just like speaking through her. Like these are such important questions that we as women need to ask. You know, sometimes that guy is just not it for you. Sometimes he's just not it. Right. And you have to ask yourself, is this who the Lord has called you to be with? Because at the end of the day, Eve didn't find Adam. Right. Oh my goodness. Okay, Vasoye, come on, let's preach. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so are you currently dating? I am not currently dating. Okay. Single <laughs> and happy. Hey, that's all right. Enjoy your single season because it is definitely a blessing. It is a blessing, it is. And do you have a desire for marriage? Yep, I definitely do. <laughs> I hope one day um, that I will get married. And um, I have been praying for my husband, even though I don't know who he is. And God has been speaking to me a lot about my husband, not necessarily who he is, but what God's called him to do. So I'm actually very excited for marriage, um, just to have a partner to be on fire with. And not don't get me wrong like I know like in your single season there's purpose there and there's so much that you can do in your single season there's a purpose for everything so I'm excited living for Christ in my single season but I'm also excited for marriage because I know like my husband has like such a calling on his life and I'm excited to serve by his side and like help him fulfill the calling on his life as well yes. <laughs> it's just funny because as I say that there is I remember one time like I've been praying for who my husband is for as long as God pulled me into him and just praying over him, even though I don't know who he is. I remember one time in 2016, I was, I think it was like November, 2016, I was praying over my husband. And then I was so selfish. I had all these things that I wanted to do and I wanted to accomplish. And I was like, God, let my husband come so he can help me with everything. <laughs> <laughs> I remember in that moment, like, I don't even know how to explain it. I was praying in English at first. And then I just started praying in tongues. And I was like, it was just the presence of God was so heavy. I was like on the floor. And then it was just in that moment, the Holy Spirit was like, no, you need to serve your husband. You need to 
humble yourself and serve at his side. He's not coming so that he can help you. Like he's coming and you're going to help him and like help him serve. And it's so funny. Like when I pray nowadays for him, I'm like, God, let him come so I can serve him. I want to help him with the calling on his life and what you called him to do. And I'm like actually really excited to do that. It's not something just like, I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, let him come because you said so. And so I can serve him. Like I genuinely want to do that. And that's something like the Holy Spirit has changed my heart over the last year. And so I'm doing that. So I'm really excited for that. Yes, that is so crazy. Oh my gosh. Like I, that is so crazy. I'm sorry. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I am well, taking back. I had to write about it right after. It Come happened. on. Just so I can remember it. I was like, it was just such a powerful moment when the Holy Spirit did that. Because there's just, sometimes we get so caught up with our own selfish ambitions and desires that we forget that like, we're there to serve as well. Oh my gosh. Like literally that, that is literally my story. But for me, I prayed for my husband since I was in like elementary school. Like, I don't know what it was, but it it was nothing but the Lord because I was this little second grader, third grader sitting there like, Jesus, I had a bad day. Can you please make sure that my husband didn't have a bad day? Oh, that that is okay. I I love that. (laughs) But like, it's it's so crazy because like the Lord place this desire to be a wife in me at such an early age so like I've been praying for my husband the entire time and in my mind his name was Trevor but (laughs) but you know in reality I ended up marrying uh my elementary school well I'm not even gonna say he was my crush because he had a crush on me and I didn't even notice but the same time that I was praying for my husband I had known him in elementary school, in second wow. grade, and I had no idea that it was going to be him. So it's so crazy and it's so powerful how these prayers for your husband, wherever he is, regardless of whether you know him or not, are truly ordained by the Lord and that he is truly ordering your steps to get you prepared for him. Wow, that is awesome. That's all yet. I Come on. <laughs> Come awesome. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So looking back on the relationship with the guy who wasn't necessarily living for Christ, what advice can you give for a woman who may be going through the same thing? So like dating someone that's not saved? Dating someone that's not saved, maybe dating someone that claims to be saved but doesn't necessarily reflect you know that godliness that we all are attracted to Mm. or just someone who's looking for someone to date who is saved I would say so there are very few things that um affect your life as much as marriage and I've messed up I've done some things and I'm like God please forgive me but there's one thing like I do not want to mess up who I marry because like what like that is something that's so important and determines so much of your life and so much of your future that's not something you want to mess up that's not something that you want to trust in your you don't really want to trust in yourself for everything you want to trust in the lord for everything but if there's one thing you're going to commit to god let it be marriage let it let god choose your husband and don't come in thinking like god i like this one here can you make him like you like let god bring that man that is already like him, that God has already molded and chosen to be like, to be your husband. And like a lot of people think that you need to date this person. You need to date every, like you need to date five different people before you meet your husband. But if you just trust God, he will choose that person for you. You don't have to go through all the heartbreak. God is all knowing. He's already been to the future. He already knows what it looks like. So he already knows what your marriage is going to look like. And instead of you in prayer, battling and fighting every day, like, God, please change my husband. God, please make him more like you. God, please mold this person or whatever. You don't have to fight it because if God's already ordained it, you, like, all you have to do is like, God, you gave me this husband. <laughs> God, this is yes. for me. And then you already know, like, you, when you're walking in what God has already God has already put his hand on like you don't have to fight for it like it's already it's God so you just take it to God like and commit it to God so that's something if there's anything else that you don't trust God with please trust God with your marriage like that's my advice let him let him bring the man you are preaching today (laughs) you are preaching on today ladies let him bring the man oh my goodness the man yes Well, you know what? We'll be right back. 
Are you enjoying the podcast you're listening to right now? No worries. It doesn't have to stop here. With more podcast interviews, blogs, and our monthly magazine, we want to invite you into our community of sisterhood. We are Daughters of a King, which makes all of us sisters in Christ. As sisters, it's our responsibility to encourage and inspire one another. Because at the end of the day, as iron sharpens iron, one woman sharpens another. Check us out online, ironwifey.com. That's I-R-O-N-W-I-F-E-Y dot C-O-M. All right. Welcome back, everyone. We are listening to a sharpening session with Ada Basoye, who is a blogger and writer and amazing woman of God. She was preaching some life tonight. So if you are just not tuning in, make sure you go back and listen to the beginning of this interview because your life will be made. So we're going to shift gears a little bit. And I want to know what a typical day in your life looks like. Okay. So I really have to say that my, um, my life revolves around God. Um, it hasn't always been that way, but um, right now I work full time. And there was a point in time where I was working a part time job, and um, I was praying for the job that I have now. And um, so when I was working that part time job, I didn't start to like later in the afternoon. So I would get up late, like a little later, and like have all this time to spend with God. So when I started my full-time job, I was like, ooh, I got to wake up at like six o'clock to get my, my, my time with God in. But um, there's just such a joy in my heart that I just wants to spend that time in his presence that it's like God's grace. It's like easy to wake up earlier and have that time in his presence. So I would say like I wake up, make sure I spend time with God. Um, on my way to work, I'm like listening to a message or listening to worship music. I work all day if I'm not on a call or like in a meeting or something. I am like listening to worship music or something. Um, so I work in healthcare consulting and that's pretty much my day, Monday through Friday. And then I'm home. And then um, I usually, if I don't like, usually during the week I go to church or Bible study or a small group and Monday evenings is usually like the only time I don't have anything. And then maybe I'll write or um, listen to a sermon or just like have some worship music going and just either maybe make dinner or something or just do something really chill. Um, On the weekends, I maybe hang out with people, go to church. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that's about it. Okay. What led you to Atlanta? Well, I think um, my mom had her 50th birthday here during my junior year of college, and I just fell in love with the city. And I was like, I have to move here after I graduate. And I did. <laughs> I moved to Atlanta after I graduated. So, yeah. That is awesome. And how do you balance your faith in the workplace? I think that's a really good question. This is something that I'm, I'd say I'm struggling with. Um, everyone at, like, my workplace knows that, like, oh, yeah, she goes to church a lot and everything. But um, I don't know that I actually i am very bold with my faith at work as I'd like to be. So that's something I'm asking God to work on on with me but um I tr- I I don't compromise myself but I would like to be more bold in sharing like what God's done in my life and who he is yes amen pray for me <laughs> girl pray for all of us we all need the prayer you are not alone in that Mm-mm. so a lot of times uh you know we go to school we graduate Uh, We think we're going to have this life that we have planned out and things just sometimes don't necessarily go how we think they're going to go. They don't go according to our plan. They go according to God's plan. So where did you see your life before now? That's a good question. (laughs) So um, like I said, growing up, there was always something in me that longed for a deep relationship with God. Um, but I never knew it would be at the point where it is now. I never knew that I would long to just completely surrender. And that's something that's happened like very recently in terms of just wanting to surrender everything to God. So in terms of that, I didn't see it where I am now. But in terms of like living in Atlanta and um, working a full-time job, I guess I would have thought like, okay, yeah, this is where I want to be. But what I didn't think the journey it took to get here, I didn't see that happening at all. Um, like I was saying before, I worked a part-time job before I had this full-time for about a year. 
And during that time, I was so broke. It was ridiculous. Um, and that was like, I realized like that was a time where God just brought me closer to him and was having me just trust in him a lot more. And that was something that I couldn't have planned like, just in that season because it was really hard at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but what it did, because like my job didn't start to like one o'clock or three o'clock in the afternoon because it was an after school program. I had all this time before that to spend with God and like after to spend with God, like not working full time. So that um, and also that was when I started my blog and everything. So it just allowed me to grow closer to God in that time. And I'm grateful for it. Amen. And so seeing the growth that you've had from, you know, graduation until now, um, basically, at what point did you see the Lord kind of reordering your steps or getting you back on track? Okay. (laughs) This is, um, I would say, so when I graduated, I said something to my friend. I was, um, I said, when I move to Atlanta, I'm going to get closer with God. And I said that. And that was, I graduated in May. I didn't move to Atlanta until August. So I had all this time over the summer to get close with God, but I did it. (laughs) I spent that whole summer just like acting the fool. Like I was, um, cause I was, went to school in Michigan. So I was traveling between Michigan and Canada. I was just having fun, like hanging out with my friends all the time, partying. I just had a lot of fun during that summer. And then I moved to Atlanta. (laughs) Oh my goodness. I moved to Atlanta. And this is the thing, like when you say you're going to do something and you put it out there and you know, like, oh, I'm going to get closer with God at this point in my life or at this point in my life, I would encourage anyone listening, don't put that off. Like if you if you get close with God now, because like you give, you, you're giving the enemy notice to plan when you say, oh, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it off till this time. So it was my plan to get closer with God when I moved to Atlanta. Throughout my whole life, I've just felt like I need, like, I want more of God. I want more of God. But I just kept putting it off and kept putting it off. And yeah. Yes. Well, it is amazing to see how far he's brought you. Um, it's also amazing to see how on fire you are for God. How do you keep that? <laughs> I would say that um, my relationship with God is anchored with spending time in his word and spending time praying and um, just having that personal relationship for myself. So I would say when I started doing that, I started having personal time with God in um, sometime in February of 2016. And I started like making sure I was reading my Bible and praying. And um, through that, I would feel the presence of God in that moment. And maybe it was like an hour of time. And I would feel God so strongly in that moment. And then I would go through it the rest of the day and I wouldn't really feel God. I wouldn't think about God. And it would be whatever. But the more time I spent with God and doing that, I then would begin to feel the presence of God all day. And then if I missed that time with God, like in the morning, I wouldn't feel him that day. But the more and more I did it and the more I grew in my relationship with God, I would like maybe go a day without my quiet time, but there was still a longing in me to just pray throughout my day and sing praises throughout my day. And so so even if I miss my quiet time these days, it's just like God is such a 24-7 thing with me now that I feel his presence strongly no matter what. And I've just grown in my relationship, but it's anchored in having that personal time with him. Yes. Yes. Anchor yourself in Christ. I love that. Yeah. So, Vasoye, how do you exercise your faith? How do I exercise my faith? That's a good question. I would say, um, for me, God's really been teaching me about surrendering to him. Mm. And um, I was telling you before, like, I, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> like, I have all these plans of all these things that I want to do and all these things I want to accomplish. And I think the biggest way I'm exercising my faith now at this point in my life is saying, even if like, I don't accomplish like these things that I don't want to do, I'm putting them aside and I'm trusting you to get me where you want me to be. A lot of things that I wanted to hold on to because I'm like, God, I don't know if I really trust you to take me like, so for me to have this great life I have planned for myself, I don't know if I really trust you. (laughs) 
to give me all that. So I'm going to go ahead and do it myself and do it in my own plans and in my own way. And um, so I think I'm exercising my faith by just letting go of that and saying, God, like, I trust you to get me there. I trust you to get me this life I want. But I think even more so, I've come to a point where even if I don't get any of those things, I want your life, I want your plans for me above my plans for myself. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And it took a long time to get here. This wasn't like in 2016 when God like drew me close to him that it was like, okay, I'm ready to surrender and give up all my (laughs) Really, like really this just happened this year where I was like, I'm ready to push aside my plans and I want, want what you want above what I want. Like I've been saying that, but it hasn't really been my heart's posture. It was really just the end of January that God made that my heart's posture that to want what he wants for my life above mine. Yes, to trust in him with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And Ooh, he it, will direct your path. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so speaking of him directing your path, um, we know that at the end of the day, the Lord is going to have his way in our lives. But where do you see yourself in the next five years? Where do I see myself in the next five years? So, um, yeah, so with learning to surrender, that's something I'm really learning to trust God for. But in terms of what God's been speaking to me, I know that He's definitely called me to preach, but I don't know if that's five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. So I don't know if that's going to be still in my current job, but I would probably say (coughs) I'm definitely still working on my blog. I see that as a part of my ministry. So I don't know where God's going to take that um, and how much he's going to add onto that. Um, But next five years, I probably see myself married with kids, maybe still in the workplace, maybe not, maybe a combination of the workplace and ministry. I don't know. But if you would have asked me like five months ago, I would have given you a step-by-step plan (laughs) of what (laughs) my life is going to look like in five years. But I'm really just in a place where I'm trying to learn to surrender. (laughs) And um, when God gives me the plan, I'll let you know. (laughs) We can come again. (laughs) That sounds good to me. And, you know, speaking of, you know, working full-time or working part-time and being in ministry but the blog still being a part of your ministry where do you see your blog in the next five years yeah so um whether i'm still writing my blog or not that i'm not 100 percent sure about it's something i would still like to do um but i know i'll definitely still be writing i'm actually working on a book right now so <laughs> so we'll see if like it's going to transition more into like just working on books or working on books and blogging Um, but like I said, I know it's definitely a part of my ministry and I'll just see like what God wants to do with that ministry, whether it's to write the blog, write books, preach, or just the book and like whatever God wants. So we'll see what happens. Well, based on our interview today, I can clearly see the calling of being called to preach all over everything that you have said, every every single thing. So I am definitely praying for you in that. And I can't wait to see where the Lord leads you and how he places you in that place where you do preach, or even if it's just like conversations like this, because girl, you have life. I I don't even even have words. You have just given me so much life in these last couple of minutes. And I'm just like blown away. So I cannot wait To hear you amongst thousands of women, hundreds of women, 10 women or five women or the one woman that may be listening to this. I can't wait to see how the Lord grows it from here. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Oh, it is my pleasure. I appreciate you. So thank you for being so on fire for the Lord and so obedient to God. It is just like, it's, oh, what is that word? Like, it's contagious. Like, your energy for the, your fire for the Lord, it's contagious. And I just want to, like, like end this interview and get up and just start doing stuff, like, for the Lord. Like, I, I, I am just so, I am so taken back by the, the, the Lord in you. I'm just so taken back by it. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, it is my pleasure. So I know that I'm like super overwhelmed right now, but I'm going to just, I'm going to start wrapping up this interview. I just have a couple more questions for you. Do we still have a little bit of time? Yes, definitely. (laughs) Okay. What is, what is the goal that you want to accomplish this year? So this year, um, 
so I was telling you that I've kind of been really selfish with my ambitions and things. Um, so I worked on, I was working on some other stuff in the book that I'm currently working on that God gave me the idea for. I've put it to the side, but now I've dropped my selfish ambitions and I'm working. I want to get back on working on this book. And my goal for this year is to finish working on it and get it up there. Okay. Any way we can get a sneak peek into what you may be working on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's actually a story on it. Um, so I, I, if you don't mind me telling like the story behind it. And not at I all. Can, I can tell you about it. So yeah. So on August 3rd of 2017, I remember I woke up just feeling really like sad and like bitter because I was having such a hard time finding a job. And then um, I remember I was just praying that morning. <coughs> and then after that, I was on LinkedIn looking at jobs. And it was funny because I actually, I remember applying to the job that I have now on that day. And I remember after I applied to that job, I didn't know I was going to get it on that day. Um, but I remember after I applied to that job, the God gave me the idea for the book. Um, it's going to be okay. And it's not about like, it's not about like, like you always know the situation you're going through is going to be okay. Like, you know, like eventually like things will turn out, but it's like, it's about what do you do during the season? Like, you know, that joy is going to come in the morning. You know that the situation will turn out, but what do you do while it's nighttime? How do you do that? How do you keep yourself encouraged through that? So that was, um, that was the idea that God gave me and I just need to work on it and finish it out because that was really my season throughout the time in the part-time job. And it's so funny that God gave me the idea for that book on the day that I applied to the job, on the day that that season technically ended, but I didn't even know it. So it's just really awesome and excited to finish working on it. Wow. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. I love that. Oh my gosh. I love that. That's pretty much advice that needs to just be given to everybody. It's just, <laughs> it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It really is. It really is. Oh my goodness. So, uh, I mean, I guess segue in off of that, speaking of advice, what is some of the best advice you've ever received? The best advice I've ever received has to be from that Sunday school song that says, read your Bible, pray every day, because nothing has turned my life around, like reading my Bible and praying <laughs> every day, like really like, like I said, my relationship is anchored with that quiet time in his presence. So that's the best advice I've ever received. <laughs> Awesome. What is or what advice can you give someone who may be interested in following in your footsteps? Following in my footsteps, like starting a blog, starting a blog, uh, embracing the call. So um, advice that I would give is to seek God's face and being patient. I think a lot of the times we want to we want to know what, like, what is God going to do in me? What has God called me to do? We want to know right now and right away. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing is, a lot of people want that, but they don't want God in it. And it's like, just give me what you want me to do and let me run off and go and do it. You don't want like the guidance of God every day. So the first God wants to get him into you before he wants you to go out and like speak on his behalf or fulfill purpose and all of that. So the first thing is get with God, get closer with God want God more than you want anything else and then walk out whatever he wants you to do, walk out whatever he's told you to do and let it come from that time in your, like spending time in his presence. And a lot of times you just want to be like, oh, I don't hear God. I don't know what he's saying. And I feel like for me, when I realized that God wanted me to preach, it wasn't something that I heard of. It's just something that I knew just from spending time with his presence and he'll just like begin to reveal those things. So definitely just get with God, read your Bible and pray every day. That's my yes. advice. <laughs> Yes. Read your Bible, pray every day, give with God. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm telling you, you're just giving me life. I can't wait. I just, <laughs> I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I am so excited for you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. What is, what is a scripture that you live by? I think, well, right now, the scripture that I live by, we kind of already spoke it, spoke about it, but um, Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. That's my, that's my favorite scripture right now in terms of just, because like I said, I'm in a season of just learning to surrender. So, yeah. Yes. And trust me, that is my favorite scripture right now as well. And so the <laughs> Lord, until he brings us through it. 
that'll be it. Then we'll shift our focus. What's funny is, it's so funny because, um, because in the season where God's been teaching me to surrender, I wanted to, and I talked about wanting to be more bold about my faith in my workplace. I was like, oh, what's a scripture that I can put about surrender that's, um, that I can put on my workplace for like my people to see, <laughs> so people to see when they walk by my desk. And I was like, oh, let me print the scripture about surrender. And I was originally going to put Galatians 2.20. And let me just read that to you it really quickly. I have been mm-hmm. crucified with Christ on the cross. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. And I was like, maybe that's a little too much for people that aren't safe to see. Like, oh, I think we find the Christ on the cross. So I was like, let me put the simple Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 one up for mm-hmm. them. And it was like, I, so I was like, I'm putting it up for them. And then as I see every day at work, I'm like, this is, this is for me. <laughs> like, uh-huh. this is about them. like, this is really for me. So, and that's become my favorite scripture. It's been up at my desk. Yeah. And that is awesome that you have that reminder every day to look at because it's it's something that can definitely change your attitude in the blink of an eye cuz work can sometimes not be what we want it to be but when you can look up and say okay you know what trust me Lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding acknowledge him he's going to direct your path like when you can look up and be reminded of that every day it's like okay it's going to be okay it's going to be okay. (laughs) It's going to be okay. Oh my goodness. So I have reached the end of our interview. I have like two more questions for you. One is, you know, of course you write for Iron Wifey and our motto is derived from Proverbs 27, 17. Um, That scripture says that as iron sharpens iron, one friend sharpens another. And friend, girl, you have definitely sharpened me. (laughs) But what do you think of when you hear um, our motto, which states as iron sharpens iron, one woman sharpens another? I think of just biblical community and making sure that you're surrounded with the right people. And just being as like, for me, I know like the people that I'm, grow from them all the time just like being on the phone with friends and scripture that I've heard um I've read so many times and someone else explains it to me in a different way I'm like oh my goodness I never thought about it in that way thank you for sharing it with me like that and just having like biblical community around you is so important so I just I love the idea of it and I love what you're doing I think what you're doing is so awesome I'm so excited for how God is using you and how he's just going to grow you and continue to use the magazine and the podcast and everything you're doing I think it's really really awesome oh thank you (laughs) that stuff like that makes me nervous I'm sitting here blushing okay (laughs) (laughs) it's really really awesome it's really awesome to see how you're fulfilling your calling like this and just so consistent with it it's really awesome well it is literally people like you who keep me going and just being obedient to the Lord like like that that's it like I didn't know where to start with any of this so the fact that the Lord has led me to this point and even led me to this conversation with you like I have taken back I'm blown away I can't (laughs) I'm excited for you well thank you and Bosoye how do you sharpen other women in Christ I would say, um, like through my blog and I'd say just talking to people in general, but I think the best way is just listening to other people and, um, listening to people's situations and just being an ear for people. Um, I feel like that's the best way I can and not just like shouting scripture and stuff at them, but really just like, how can I help you and how can I serve you? I think it's, um, what I've learned recently is like the best way to help other people and sharpen other people. Yes, I love that. Well, I am not going to take any much more of your time, but I thank you. Thank you so much for coming out tonight and just preaching and dropping some wisdom and knowledge all over this interview, all over this podcast. Thank it you wasn't so me, much. it was definitely the Holy Spirit because I learned so much when I was speaking. I was like, dang God, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, the Holy Spirit definitely took over your body and your voice and just dropped it all uh, you dropped the mic and I'm just sitting here speechless like okay well that's it <laughs> <laughs> thank you I really appreciate it it is my pleasure and Basoye where can people find you so my website is Ade Basoye A-D-E-B-O-S-O-Y-E 
at avasoya.com. Awesome. And I can't wait to see the next blog post you put up because after this interview, I know the next one is just going to be fire. <laughs> yeah, it's a vulnerable one. <laughs> Amazing. So, Pasoye, thank you so much for tuning in with us. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you too, girl. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> And guys, you have listened to another sharpening session with Iron Wifey this week. We had Arebisoye Alebeji. Alebeji. Yeah. Alebeji. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> I try so hard. The way it's just thought, I'm like, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Uh, but Arebisoye has brought us so much wisdom and insight into single, being content in our single seasons. Um, having this desire after God's own heart, just being obedient to the Lord, waking up every day and praying and reading your Bible. Just li- literally, she just came and just dropped the mic. So <laughs> I am so excited for you guys just being able to to tune into this interview. I am, as you can see, I don't have words right now. So I'm just going to say that God is good all the time. And I'm I'm sorry, God, it's good. Amen. Basoye, thank you, thank you, thank you.